Good afternoon, parents. I just wanted to take a moment and walk through a couple different uh, functions of Microsoft Teams and how we can uh, look at our students' work as parents and ensure that their work is being turned in, being turned in on time, and that uh, it is being turned in completed. So I'm going to share my screen real quick and we will uh, begin walking through. We will begin walking through. The different aspects of Microsoft Teams and navigating it as a student. First, in Microsoft Teams, you will notice when you log in, a student has a uh, variety of different teams or classes that they uh, are assigned to join. When the student logs in for the morning, uh, they will uh, choose which class they need to be in, and that will bring up all their materials for the day. Now, normally, they will actually begin their day by clicking on their calendar, and once they do that, they will choose a class that they need to be in for that particular time. They will then select that class and join those meetings. Once that is done, they will then go over to their Teams tab and select the class or team that they need to be in to access their work for the day. Um, so this is what our Teams materials look like. Um, our team post our uh, class begins to look like up here. You see a general tab, uh, which is for the every everyday uh, whole class as a whole. You will see on the post tabs, you will see uh, different where different announcements come through. This is where students can talk to the teacher or uh, each other about assignments. Um, you will also see a files tab. In this tab, it's documents that have been uploaded to the class for the class to use. Uh, you will also see sometimes work that has been uploaded uh, from individual students. But every student can access this file tab, and there will be a lot of times uh, different forms in here. We also have a class notebook, and what this class notebook is, it's like a filing cabinet uh, for students to access different aspects aspects of their work. Uh, you will see that when it opens up on the left hand side here is the navigation tab. If you click on that, uh, it will open it up and there is a space for collaboration space. This is where we sometimes use students uh, to communicate with each other about specific assignments or if they're working in small groups, we could use this collaboration space. Uh, the content library is where uh, teachers will upload information that students will have access to, but they cannot edit it. Um, I know that personally I use this for uh, uploading, for instance, uh, anchor charts that the students will use uh, for various things. I have an academic vocabulary word wall in there. Uh, and then there is one that has uh, their student information and they will have their own personal filing cabinet. Uh, as this is a mock team that I, I had a colleague create for me, um, it's rather uh, bare in my case. Uh, for my particular classroom, I have it separated out into science and social studies tab. Right. But today what we are looking most at is we are going to look at the assignment tab. And this tab will show us what is active in our assignment, what students have to uh, are currently working on. And we will also work in the grades tab. Uh, this is a very useful tab. A grades tab is very useful in the sense that you get a quick shot of what the students are working on, what has been turned in, and what has not. And I'm actually going to begin here in the grades tab. 
as you will see, these different assignments have been given to me. And there are different statuses. First, on the left hand side, it tells me the due date that that assignment was, should have been turned in. Uh, then it gives me the name of the assignment. It gives me the current status of the assignment. It gives me uh, a field for any feedback that has been given to me from the teacher. And it also tells me uh, any of the uh, points, uh, the actual grade. Uh, for instance, this first assignment was due on February 9th. Now, a lot of these uh, for, I'm using these for um, examples, and uh, I have already turned them in, or um, the teacher has already returned them to me with feedback. But as you can see, this first one of uh, the vocabulary quiz, it was returned to me. The teacher offered feedback that said, awesome work. My grade was a 16 out of seven, which means I received extra credit for this assignment. Right here on the status, if you click where it says returned, it'll open up the actual assignment. So this is our home assignment screen. Uh, and a lot of times you will see the due date, of course, the, the name of the assignment, the due date. Uh, it'll tell me if there were any instructions written on the assignment screen. Uh, it will automatically give me any feedback that uh, if this is a as this was returned already. It'll give me the feedback and my grade. You'll also up here in the right hand corner. You'll see the status. We mentioned how the status showed returned. Well, this was returned on Monday, February 8th at 4:33 p.m. And if I click on that assignment, it'll pull up the actual assignment. This one happened to be a, a quiz. And uh, as I scroll through this quiz, this was made in Microsoft Form, and the students were uh, required to either choose, they were multiple choice questions. There were also some that were short answer. Now, as you go through the, if you're looking at a student's work, and they have multiple choice and short answer questions. The teacher will have to review that test um, themselves and ensure that the short answer questions are correct. For instance, this question was uh, one, uh, scored for one point. The question says, Dad carefully inspected the tire to find out where the hole was. What is something that you have to inspect carefully? Think about what is inspect, inspected and apply it to your own life. My answer was I inspected the PS4 to see why my game wasn't working. Well, these, the answer to these questions can vary. So the computer can't automatically um, grade that one. So the teacher has to go in and submit that grade themselves. As for multiple choice, you can tell the computer to automatically grade those. There are, with multiple choice, usually there's only one answer, sometimes two. Uh, so it's either a yes or a no. So the computer can automatically judge, um, grade those. Here, you can see where um, I put in a text answer. Uh, it says, who is your favorite third grade teacher? My friend, Mrs. Matthews, uh, her answers that she allowed to be correct were uh, Miss Dot Matthews and Just Matthews. Well, she gave these correct answers for students to be able to type in, but if these answers do not exactly match the choices that she provided, then it will mark the question as wrong. You see here that the question was marked wrong. So the teacher has to uh, go in and verify that every text answer uh, is valid and correct. For instance, on this one, her correct answer said Miss Dot Matthew and Matthew. Well, my answer was obviously comma Miss Dot Face Matthew with a smiley face emoticon. Well, that doesn't match the answer she provided. So 
she had to go in and manually give me points for this one. Well, she decided I got extra credit on that one. So just because if you look at a student quiz from Microsoft Form, it may show um, fewer points than if you know you had an answer in, uh, correct, it may show it incorrect for that very reason that the spelling may be off by one letter, one space, one punctuation mark. If it all is off in any way, it will mark it wrong. So uh, that is one thing to look out for. So I'm going to close this and it'll take me back to the um, assignment screen where it's telling me uh, where I can actually do my work. And if I hit back again, that takes us back to the grades tab, beginning of the grades tab. I can go on down to this next assignment. Again, this one was a quiz. It told me that there are nine possible, possible points that I turned it in late on February 11th. The due date was February 9th. There were no instructions. And if I click into my work, I can see that I turned in the assignment. But looking at this, it either there's one of two things that have happened. It has not been graded, or I turned it in blank. And once it is a quiz, once we submit it, we cannot go back in and look at our answers once it has been submitted, unless it has been completely graded. That's the only time we could go back in and look at it. We go down to the next, uh, next assignment, uh, pre present tense noun. Again, this tells me that the assignment had been returned to me. If it says returned, then that is uh, where I have turned it into the teacher. They have reviewed it and they sent it back to me. That's very similar to where teachers would pass out papers once a week and then send them home uh, or for the student to make corrections. But in this case, as soon as a teacher grades it, they return it back to the student. In this case, if I open it up, I can see all the same information. It was due on February 9th. Uh, and I had turned it in early. Uh, it was returned to me on February 8th at 4.39 p.m. And there's feedback. It says this is blank. Re resubmit with work. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to look at this assignment. Well, when I pull up this assignment, I can see that the assignment was not completed. I did circle one uh, answer, but in essence, the assignment was complete and not uh, was not completed. And so the teacher sent it back to me saying that the assignment was blank and I needed to uh, fix it. I can go on down to the next assignment, possessive noun. Again, this has been turned in. I turned it in two days late, and there was feedback already given to me. If I click on this toggle button in the feedback column, it tells me, uh, the teacher told me, check number four, answer five. Remember to add an apostrophe before the S. Also check the last question. There's a second part to it, resubmit for a higher grade. You can see that I made a four out of six on this assignment. If I open it up, I can then open the assignment. And I can see everything that the teacher was talking about. From this area, I can then um, make corrections and resubmit it. Click on Edit Notebook. Oh, it tells me if this one is locked, and sometimes this happens. I get closed, and I can click on Undo Turn In. That means that she returned it to me, um, and I can click on Undo Turn In, then open up the assignment, refresh because it's asking me to, 
I'll go back into the assignment. Open it back up. And from here, after I click on undo and undo turn in and then refresh the screen, I can then open up the assignment and make the needed corrections. I'm not going to make the corrections just yet. Once I do, I would click turn in again. Once again, the next assignment, math worksheet, you can see that I turned it in two days late. I open up the math worksheet. And I can see the work that I did. Again, this assignment I turned in blank. Now I'm going to undo turn in on this one real quick. So I can show us something else in a moment. This next assignment, the one that says mock assignment, I turned it in 25 days late. I opened up the worksheet and I completed this assignment. Uh, the teacher went in and checked everything, made sure everything was correct. And my wonderful friends being silly, and she scored me uh, 99,999 points out of um, a possible 100,000 points. She told me that I did a great job and I should resubmit for extra credit. Now, I have used this uh, examples in the past, and I was just showing how uh, different things can be uploaded. And I'll get through that again in just a moment. So the grades tab is a quick way to see what students are currently working on. Uh, I like to pay attention to the ones that say return and uh, check the feedback. I also like to pay attention to the points because if there are um, no points or if it is a low score, then that means that there are uh, a couple different things. One is the assignment hasn't been graded. If it hasn't been graded, it's simply going to say turned in, and it will have a blank slash uh, nine in this case. Um, or it could have been returned without a grade. Uh, for instance, this one, it says uh, returned. Uh, the feedback says this is blank. Resubmit with your work. And then it says blank slash six. No points were assigned. So that is a good way for me to see that uh, if there's a blank slash six, it's a good way for me to tell that uh, there's something going on with that assignment. Uh, it hasn't been graded yet. It hasn't it's been returned because it's been submitted blank. Uh, there could be a multiple different things. But if there is a blank slash six, that's something I would uh, definitely be concerned about looking at. So that's a little bit about the grades tab. That is an excellent way for parents to quickly see, get an overview of what's going on. So if we look at the assignment tab, when we go in, a lot of times we will see uh, there's two different places for um, in here. One says assigned, one says completed. Well, as a parent uh, who has students doing virtual school, I am going to see this. Uh, see, okay, this is what you where it says assigned, and Here's my assignment. It was due on February 9th. Obviously, because that is past due, I am going to be concerned with why that hasn't been turned in. So I will ask, uh, ask the student to open that and take a look at it. Well, the instructions were to complete the following worksheet and turn it in for the class tomorrow. Well, this one is what we looked at a few moments ago, just kind of um, out of the grades tab. And I told you that I was going to, I did the undo turn in. Well, once I did the undo turn in, that told me I could go in and make corrections. Well, I had turned it in blank. And now I wanted to go back in and make corrections. So I would go in and click up here at the draw tab. And if I wanted to type in an answer, I'm going to make sure that I click on the uh, T 
text selector. So I could type in an answer. Hello, friend. And that's the answer. I could also choose one of the pen selectors and choose a color and make necessary changes. Now, for the most part, um, we prefer our answers to be typed, but there are instances where it is um, okay to use the drawing tool. But if you are actually writing out a, an answer, sometimes it can get very hard to read if a student is trying to do it really fast. So we do prefer answers to be typed. So once I've made corrections, I will then click close. I will then turn in the assignment. If I needed, if I realized that I made a mistake or did not cor uh, complete something, I then could then click undo turn in, and it would allow me to make those corrections again. But Again, once you click turn in, it's going to give you the current status where you turned it in late on February 15th. So once I turned that in, that moved it from my assigned tab into my completed work. Well, once I go into my completed work, this is where it's important as parents to keep an eye on these assignments. When I come in and my student tells me, hey, I've already turned in all my homework, I've already done everything I need to do, I look at this and then when I look in the assigned, it says nothing left to turn in, hashtag winning. I says, oh, great. I look at completed, everything looks like it's turned in, oh, well, we're all well and good, and um, uh, I'm a happy parent. So. I can tell my um, daughter, Grace, good job. Uh, you can go out and play. You can watch uh, video game, play video games. Um, you can do whatever you need to do now. However, as a parent, I also want to be sure to go in and look at these assignments. For instance, a minute ago, I showed you that those assignments could have been turned in blank. Looking back at my math worksheet, where I just made some corrections. Initially, I had turned this assignment in blank. There was nothing on here. So as a parent, if I open up this assignment and I see that there's that this work is, uh, I had turned it in, but there's no real answers here. Um, uh, 0.8 times 10 to the second power is not a smiley face, uh, as well as 9.61 times 10 to the sixth power is not nothing. I am going to want to make sure as a parent that my child has answered all of these questions. I don't say that they have to be correct uh, as a parent because students need to do their own work and the teacher needs to see where they are uh, possibly making errors, where there's errors coming from, and how uh, the teacher can better help the student. So obviously, you don't need to check all your students' answers to ensure that they are correct. But we do need for parents to uh, check and ensure that uh, the, the students have completed their assignment. As a parent, if I go in and I see that it is blank or that it is uh, has nonsense answers, um, then obviously I'm going to be concerned and ask the student to redo that assignment. Again, these completed, I would want to go through each one of these assignments and check ins to ensure that the student has com actually completed it. For this one, the student uh, has been submitted. And this one was a quiz, it had already been taken. And with quizzes um, done in Microsoft Form, 
you can only complete those one time. If for whatever reason that test needed to be redone, the teacher would have to assign it to them a second time. They cannot make corrections to the original quiz. That would have to be assigned to a second time and redone completely. So, present tense now. I'm going to want to look at this. My, my teacher uh, sent it back to me. I had turned it in blank. And the teacher sent it back to me and said resubmit with work. Well, I opened this up and as a parent. I open it up and I can see that I did not complete this, that my child did not complete this assignment. One, I'm going to be concerned about why the student turned it in blank and why it wasn't completed. And obviously, I'm going to want to make sure that the student goes ahead and completes it. In order to do that, the student will need to go in. Sometimes uh, when the student is, when it is returned to the student, It'll show up in their completed section. And the student then can make corrections. Again, I'll go to the draw tab. And if it's just circling an answer, it is OK to use the highlighter tool to highlight the answer. Or they can use the pen tool to circle the answer. Again, if there is something they need to be typing instead of writing it out with the drawing tool. We ask that they actually type it using the typing tool. It makes it a lot easier for the teacher to read. Please type your answer. This one is obviously a lot easier to read than the, the type, the written one with the drawing tool. I understand that the uh, typing tool can be sometimes difficult because um, the box doesn't always um, go to where you want it to when you start typing. So we have to Click on the box. We'll generally type in what we want. Uh, type then we will have to move that box where we need it to go. Yes, that is annoying, and we are all aware that. Um, it's annoying to do that, and sometimes if your uh, keyboard on your tablet isn't working, uh, moving it with your finger on the screen is difficult. But uh, it is definitely, uh, from a teacher standpoint, it is much easier to read the typed words rather than having where the student has tried to draw it out using the drawing tool. So once the student makes the correction, they would then hit close and they would click on turn in again. So that has been turned in. Again, all of that came out of the completed section. All that we just did came out of the completed section, not in the assigned. So as parents, as a recap, as a parent, it's going to be important that when we look in our students' assignments, our students tell us that um, their, all their assignments are completed. They've done everything, they've turned it in. Well, looking here, it tells us just that. The assigned shows there's nothing left to do. You're winning. Thank you. Good job. Well, as parents, again, we want to go in and look at all the uh, recent assignments to ensure that they have been actually completed. We can justify or we can reconcile that with the grades tab by looking at our current grade. If we've turned everything in uh, and it has all been graded, we should see a grade with, such as four out of six, 
or um, whatever out of whatever. If we do not see a current grade, then again, we are going to want to kind, to kind of look at why we don't see a grade. We can do that by opening the file, uh, the assignment, and checking the actual assignment. We can also check the feedback. Again, this one says uh, it was turned in blank, resubmit it with work. So using the assignment tab and the grades tab together is a quick, easy way for us to reconcile what our students have done and turned in and completed. So as a, this is one way that parents look at it, uh, how parents can see what the students are currently working on. As a teacher, I want to show you what we as teachers see. Again, this is a mock team uh, that has no real student information in it. So again, the teacher still sees the general uh, tabs that students will see. We have our posts. Again, we have a file section where there may be different uh, class materials uploaded. Uh, you see here there is one about the nervous system. You will also see the class notebook um, where each individual child has their own file cabinet uh, type of information. Now, as a uh, teacher, I can go in. I see all my students. If I open up one student individually, I see their uh, tabs. And if I open up each one of those tabs, I can see their different assignments that they have worked on. And if they are currently working on an assignment, I can open this up and I can see what they are working on as they are doing it. So for instance, if um, Ms. Matthews was working on this assignment, I can see, I can physically see her uh, circling this B or circling the C as she's doing it at that moment. So sometimes that is one way that as teachers we can go in and ensure that students are actually working on what they're supposed to be working on. But from the assignment screen uh, tab that we had just gone over as a student, I'm going to click on the assignment. As a teacher, it shows me all the assignments that are current that students are currently working on and it tells me how many students out of how many students have actually completed it and turned it in. So on this add and subtract fractions assignment, one student out of five has turned it in and I have returned one assignment to students. So if I open this up, it shows me each student that it still has not uh, completed the assignment, who has not turned it in. Well, this status here, when it says not turned in, that means that that student has not even opened the assignment to look at it. Again, once I click into that assignment, this is what it looks like from the teacher's perspective. It gives me their assignments that, that uh, they should be working on. It tells me which student I am uh, working with. It tells me their student work, which is, this is a status. And if you remember, it said uh, not turned in. If I click on view history, this tells me exactly what has happened. The assignment was uh, given to the student on February 4th. It was due on February 5th, but nothing else has um, happened to that assignment. So Ms. Adkins has not opened that assignment, has not completed it. If you look at it, it's completely blank. That is the same thing that has happened with all of these assignments. Ms. Adkins did not turn hers in. Uh, Mr. Emmons did not turn his in. Ms. Purrier has not uh, turned hers in, has not. Uh, Ms. Whitmore, again, the same thing. None of those students have even opened those assignments. Again, if it says not turned in, in this case, it means it has not been completed, has not been opened. I will often put notes in there. If it just passed the due date, I will, for my class, I will often put notes. 
along the lines of um, assignment has not been started as of today's date. Uh, today is February 15th. 02-15-2021. And I won't answer, I won't uh, add a grade to that because they still have the opportunity to, for my class, they still have an opportunity to complete that assignment. I will regularly tell the students that they need to uh, go in and check and make sure that they have not, uh, if they have not completed something. So that is one way that they could go in uh, again, like we talked about on their grades tab. Um, the student would go in and see on their grades what they could, um, because they would, ha would not have a grade on there. The teacher would, uh, the I'm sorry, the parent would go in, look at that, see if there was no grade, and see that there was feedback. And because there was feedback, uh, uh, the student the parent would open that up and say, hey, it has not been turned in or started as of this date. It was due on that date. And we could then begin to ask questions. So again, looking at this assignment, I see as a, as a teacher that one has been returned to the student. I see the student's name. I see the status. The status is that I returned it to that student. I see the feedback. And I see that the grade that was um, awarded or earned, rather. I see that uh, they got a 100 out of 100 possible points. From this point, I can open up that assignment where it says click on where it says status. And it will show me that that student's work. and see exactly what Ms. Matthews did for her assignment. One important thing that we see as teachers, the history, view history. This was assigned on February 4th. It was due on February 5th. The student viewed it. Again, this was due on February 5th. The student opened it up, viewed it for the first time. When it says viewed, then that's where the student opened it up for the first time. She opened it on February 8th at 8.42 a.m. She completed it and turned it in uh, at 8.42 a.m. Um, again, this is a mock uh, class and uh, you would hope that they <laughs> would spend a little bit more time on it than just one minute. But then uh, they turned it in and the, re the teacher reviewed it, uh, graded it, and returned it back to the student on February 8th at 3.25 p.m. If the student made corrections after that point, it would then say turned in again. So it gives us the complete history. And so I'm gonna go back to another assignment. This one that says um, Black History Month, we see that uh, there are three students who have not opened the assignment. We see that Ms. Whitmore has opened the assignment. It says viewed. So if I go into that assignment, it tells us now if I look at the history. I, it was assigned on February 4th. It was due on February 5th. and Ms. Whitmore actually opened the assignment on February 11th at 6 p.m., but nothing else has been done to it at that point, from that point. It has not been completed. It has not been turned in. I have, uh, As a teacher, I have also returned the assignment to one student. Ms. Matthews turned in this assignment, so I'm going to open that up. Well, if I go back and look at the history, it was assigned on February 4th. She viewed it on February 4th. It was due on February 5th. On February 8th, she turned it in. And then on February 8th, a few hours later, I returned it to her. My comments were, 
that she turned it in blank, and I will personally put the date that it was turned in blank on, remembering that I looked at the history. It was turned in on February 8th, uh, 2021, and it was turned in blank. There was no work attached to it. This particular assignment, if I go into the assignment as a teacher, I can uh, open this up and I can uh, view the assignment and it would tell me to complete the self-paced Nearpod. Now I can open that up and that's where I would do my work and turn in anything that I needed to turn in. But I didn't turn anything in. So from a teacher standpoint, that's what it looks like when a student hasn't turned anything in. I'll check on the status. I'll check on the history. I'll open up their work and make sure that nothing was attached. And in generally, with my classes, if a student turns in a work blank, I give them to, uh, I put comments in there that it was turned in blank and I assign a grade of zero to it. I generally assign a grade of zero to it because if it's turned in blank, then that is a deliberate choice to turn it in without doing any work. So I will assign a zero to it. In my class, the students still have the opportunity to make corrections or to turn it in again. But until they do so, that grade remains zero. So I'm going to go back to where we were looking at a as a student view in our mock class. Parents have sometimes had questions about how students should attach work that was uh, um, if there have been pictures taken, uh, if they couldn't figure out how to get um, do the assignment online or um, for whatever reason, if they have to work out of their physical workbook, um, how do you attach those assignments? Well, I am going to go in and uh, show you guys how to do that. Now, I'm going to have to open one of these assignments, and um, I will click Undo Turn In. Say I turned this in and I wanted to resubmit my work, um, but my parent made me do it, write it out by hand as opposed to typing it out in um, uh, in Microsoft Word, I mean, in the program, uh, for whatever reason, whether it was a picture that needed to be added or uh, whatever needed to be done in. I would click Undo Turn In. Once I do that, you will see that, one, we can open up the work and we can make corrections as they needed to be made. However, again, like I said, my parents decided that they wanted me to uh, write this out by hand, or I needed to take a picture of the workbook that it was in to show my work, whatever the case, uh, if the assignment required pictures to be taken of a project. Um, whatever I needed to upload, a file, a uh, picture, whatever. In my assignment, as a student, right here it says Add Work with the paper clip. So what I would do is I would click on Add Work. Now this Add Work section is available for almost any assignment as long as it's not a Microsoft Forms quiz. You should be able to click on that little button that says Add Work. Well, I am going to go into there, and it will ask me if I want to upload the work from my uh, Microsoft OneDrive, whether I wanted to do it from Microsoft Teams, if I wanted to add a link. Uh, most often, we will see that we want to upload it from this device. 
it will tell us to, it'll give us the option to uh, find that file wherever we have saved it. If it is a picture from our device, most likely it will be in the uh, pictures file, folder rather, and it will be from the camera roll if we've taken a picture of it. We would then open that up and uh, add our file that we wanted to add. You might also find it in the document folder or the download folder, uh, wherever you have a um, saved that work is where you're going to look for it. So I am simply going to choose the file or picture or whatever it may be and click on open. You will see it begin to load. Once it is done loading and uploading, you will click done. You will see then it, then that it has been added to that assignment. From that point, if I have more files that I need to add, I would click add work again and add additional files as we went along, as many as needed. And again, you will see that that is ready to be turned in. Once that work is done and turned in, ready to turn in, I click on turn in again. And then it will show exactly um, what was turned in, uploaded uh, as a student. I can click on those and, uh, and to ensure that the pictures were actually turned in. So that is important information to know as a parent to help ensure that our students have, are capable of turning in the work, uh, even if it's pictures or um, something that is not uh, easily accessible um, from that assignment menu. So the quick recap, the assignments tab and the grades tab work hand in hand. In the assignments tab, I'm going to want to ensure that, yes, all my students' work has been turned in. Um, and some of it, if it says assigned, uh, it'll give you the due date on there. And you can go in as a parent and open those up and see where the students uh, currently are on those assignments. Uh, you also, as a parent, want to check their completed work. That is where the grades tab comes in to really help. I saw that my students have turned in all their work, but I come in and look at the grades tab and I see that things have been returned to them with good grades on it, great. So I'm gonna check the feedback, awesome work, uh, I am told. So this next one, I see that there's no grade, that it was turned in two days late. So I'll open that up and I'm wondering why that I haven't, um, uh, why that's not completed. Well, I don't have a grade on that. Well, I've submitted it. And as I mentioned earlier, the teacher may have to go in and uh, physically check some of those typed out uh, answers to ensure that they are correct. The teacher will then assign the grade and uh, return it, in which case it would then show returned. This next assignment, there's no grade. It says blank out of six possible points. We see that I turned it in, the student turned it in six days late. I checked the feedback and the feedback says that this is turned in blank. So as a parent, I'm going to um, ask uh, my student, why was this uh, turned in blank? We'll open up the assignment. Uh, we'll check the, check the physical assignment to ensure that everything is completed. We see that it was um, not done. We will then have the student correct it, make corrections and resubmit it. And I would want to do that with all my students' assignments. One, to ensure that they had grades for everything. And again, um, the teacher may simply have not graded it yet, uh, which is completely possible. Sometimes you will also see that there are no points assigned. 
we don't always we don't always give assignments to give grades for assignments. Sometimes we give assignments to give students practice. So every assignment we give might not be a graded assignment, but it is still essential that they get it done and get it turned in so that we can uh, ensure that the students are understanding uh, the work and uh, we can help correct any misconceptions or um, areas that the students need additional help we can possibly reteach. So I hope this has helped uh, parents uh, trying to navigate through Microsoft Teams uh, student assignments. And if you have any questions, feel free to uh, send me a message at akridgej at scsk12.org. And I'll be happy to get back with you. Uh, you can also send me a message on Class Dojo. And um, I look forward to hearing from you. I really hope this has helped you. I hope you have a great day and look forward to speaking with you in the future.